Right, we are back at Mainstream Cryptos this week, guys. Thank you for tuning in. A very important shout out to a very important person. That is you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in, for taking the time. And by the way, just a small advertising section. Here at Mainstream Cryptos, we take time out of our week so that you don't have to take as much time out of your week. That basically means we do your work for you by keeping a vigilant eye on what is going on all over the globe in terms of crypto and presenting it to you in a short, easy to understand, bite-sized video each week. Yes, every single week of the year. We're here so that you just have to tune in. You don't have to spend hours paging through dozens and dozens of articles in order to gain the information you need to invest wisely. We do that for you. With that said, let's jump in to what we're going to be speaking about today. Piece of news number one. Right. Under the radar Web3 altcoin erupts 140% this week amid $40 million fundraising round. Wow. A Web3 altcoin that's flying under the radar has surged to a new all-time high this week amid a fresh $40 million funding round. Tomy went from trading at $1.36 one week ago to a new all-time high of $5.18 on Friday morning. Tomy's anonymous team has developed TomyNet, a project that bills itself as a DAO-governed, surveillance-free alternative to the World Wide Web. The project raised $40 million in a new fundraising round, led by the digital asset market maker DWF Labs, according to a press release from the company. Other backers include investment firms Ticker Capital and Piha Equities, Japanese crypto whale Hirokado Koji, and other private investors. Piece of news number two. Yay! Happy vibes, everyone. We get to talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin spot and derivative trading volumes surge. Does it look bullish for the Bitcoin price? Bitcoin spot and derivative trading volumes have been surging in the past few weeks in tandem with the cryptocurrency's aggressive rally from early monthly lows under $20,000. That suggests there is a lot of conviction behind the recent move higher, which saw Bitcoin eclipse $28,000 this week for the first time in nine months. Here you can see the Bitcoin price chart. Currency in US dollars, that's a pretty decent surge we're seeing. The latest surge in Bitcoin trading volumes adds to the reasons to think that a new Bitcoin bull market has arrived. According to data presented by the block, the seven-day moving average of Bitcoin trading volumes on exchanges rose to around $24 billion earlier this week, its highest level since mid-2021. Number three, Bitfinex CTO says El Salvador's Bitcoin bonds will launch this summer, but there's a twist. The chief technical officer of the Bitfinex crypto exchange has claimed that El Salvador's long-awaited Bitcoin bonds will launch this year around June to September. But the bonds, he explained, may not be bonds after all. Instead, the issuance could take the form of digital securities. Arduino explained. When the idea of creating Bitcoin bonds was put forward, US Treasury interest rates were much lower. And this product, the bonds would have generated a return of 7% per year. But he added that with interest rates now reaching 4.5%, it would be hard to sell these 7% bonds as a product. He claimed that investors' preference was to see the bonds issued as shares. The feedback we had from potential investors is that they would like to see them more akin to the digital shares of an energy company operating in Salvador or a Bitcoin mining company. The bonds or shares will be made available on the Bitfinex trading platform, and the firm has been working on the project, among others, with the Central American nation. Moving on to our fourth piece of news. OpenSea sees explosive demand for Vitalik... OpenSea sees explosive demand for Vitalik Neft collection tied to Ethereum co-founder. Here's what you need to know. Since its association with Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin was revealed, the Gitcoin Presents Neft collection has surged to the top spot on OpenSea. Created by MetaLabel in collaboration with Web3 funding platform Gitcoin, the collection is based on quadratic funding. If you don't know what that is, don't stress, more on that later. A funding model designed 
a funding model designed by Vitalik Buterin, Harvard economist Zoe Hitzig, and Radical Exchange founder Glenn Vail. The drop includes the drop includes the project's 2018 white paper, a poem, and even physical prints signed by the three founders. So far, the collection has amassed around 5,600 Ethereum in cumulative trading volume, according to data by OpenSea. Furthermore, the collection consists of 9,221 items with a floor price of 0.3047 Ethereum, which is worth around 430 US dollars. Each NEFT in the collection looks like an album cover and includes a digital version of Quadratic Funding's 2018 white paper titled Liberal Radicalism, a flexible design for philanthropic matching funds, signed by Buterin and its co-authors, economist Glenn Vale and Hitzig. All right, to answer your question, what is Quadratic Funding? Quadratic Funding is a model used in the matching process for crowdfunding campaigns. It is touted as a democratic and scalable form of matching funding for public goods, as it amplifies the donations made by a large community over the contributions made by a small group with big pockets. Since this idea was introduced, more than 70 million US dollars has been directed to public goods and open source projects using quadratic funding by Gitcoin and other organizations. That's according to the collection's website. Number Five. And henceforth, we delve into a lot of news about the NEFT market global. So let's get stuck in. Meta discontinues NEFTs on Facebook and Instagram less than a year after launch. Here's the latest. Senior representatives of Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, announced that the company will be shutting down the ability to buy and sell non-fungible tokens, NFTs or NEFTs, on both platforms less than a year after the feature was introduced. Stefani Castril, the head of commerce and financial technologies at Meta, said in a tweet, Some product news. Across the company, we're looking closely at what we prioritize to increase our focus. We're winding down digital collectibles for now to focus on other ways to support creators, people, and businesses. Uh, hard not to have the suspicion that that's a very nice and general way of saying that it wasn't a very successful campaign. In any case, number six. Gaming giant Sony files a patent to enable NEFT transferability across games and consoles. Shout out to you guys, gamers. This will be of great interest for you. The patent filed last week states, the digital asset may be used via the NEFT across plural different computer simulations and or across plural different computer simulation platforms. Ownership of the NEFT may also be subsequently transferred to other end user entities for their own use across different simulations or other platforms. In simple terms, this means that players would be able to transfer their in-game assets between various video game platforms and devices, including computers, smartphones, tablets, smart TVs, and VR, AR headsets, and even cross-generationally, meaning from one PlayStation generation to the next. The patent suggested that the assets could be transferable between different gaming ecosystems altogether, saying, the standardized format may be readable to insert the digital asset in different computer simulations that may include different video games of different titles and or may be readable via different video game platforms, such as, for example, PlayStation and Xbox. Number seven. Did I say we were going to talk a lot about NIFs today? The IRS considers treating NIFs as taxable collectibles, raising concerns for digital asset owners. NEFT holders are on edge following an announcement by the IRS that they're reaching final rules surrounding the taxation of NEFT assets. The central proposal is to treat NEFTs in the same way as collectibles such as fine wine, art or stamps, according to the document published by the US Internal Revenue Service. As part of a public appeal for comments on the upcoming proposal for finalized NEFT tax rules, the IRS revealed that NEFT would be taxed like the underlying assets they denote digital ownership of. For example, if you bought an Australian Opal NEFT from the upcoming Pixelplex Opalverse marketplace, it would be taxed as if you had directly bought and collected the underlying Australian Opal. Is that fair? We would be interested to know your opinion on that, so feel free to pop a comment down below. Yikes. Beware, all NEFT owners. Yours is not an easy life.
That is, it would be an easy life if the IRS didn't get involved. Just a thought. On to number eight. The first ever physical neft shop opens in the Dubai Mall. Fastex, an ecosystem of cryptocurrency and neft products, shares the details of its first physical shop for its non-fungible tokens. Following the opening of the shop in the Mall of the Emirates, Fastex comes to Dubai Mall, the largest trading hub in Dubai. In this shop, nefts will be accompanied by physical items. As such, the shop will unlock an entirely new experience for newbies and seasoned neft enthusiasts from all over the globe. Visitors will be able to simultaneously purchase physical and digital items to become part of the Web3 revolution. The launch of these shops is a crucial milestone for the Fastex ecosystem that boasts digital asset exchange, a payment gateway, staking, and decentralized finance protocols, DeFi's. This groundbreaking opening took place on the 16th of March. Piece of news number nine. Cardano's next key update will engage ADA community members. As revealed in the latest weekly Cardano development report, members of the ecosystem community will be able to participate in a discussion of CIP 1694, which is a proposal to begin the transition to the Voltaire era. The discussion with the ADA community is due to take place next Thursday, on March the 30th, by a video conference on Zoom. All interested Cardano enthusiasts need to join via the invitation link to participate. What is the Voltaire era, you might be asking? As reported by you today, it is the fifth and final stage in the development of the Cardano network, according to its current roadmap. According to blockchain founder Charles Hoskinson, Voltaire will teach the rest of the industry a lesson in how to implement decentralized governance. Well, if you're interested in joining that meeting, get onto it. We have reached number 10. Crypto giant Binance abruptly suspends spot trading. What's going on? Don't panic, anyone. Don't panic. It will all be okay. In a surprising turn of events, Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange by daily trading volume, has temporarily suspended all online spot trading on its platform. The suspension came after a bug was discovered in the exchange's matching engine, causing an unfortunate disruption in the digital asset market. Bitcoin, for instance, dipped $700 before partially recovering from the decline. Binance acknowledged the problem in a tweet soon after the issues were discovered. This is what was said. We are aware of an issue impacting spot trading on Binance. All spot trading is currently temporarily suspended as we work to resolve this as soon as possible. New updates will be shared here. A follow-up tweet read as follows. Initial analysis indicates matching engine encountered a bug on a trailing stop order. A weird one. Recovering. Waiting for more precise ETA. Deposits and withdrawals are paused as standard operating procedure. Funds are hashtag Safu. Number 11. Now, this piece of news we are going to spend a little more time on today because it is really fascinating, especially as we get to gain insight into the minds of two very influential figures in today's digital finance world. Max Kaiser and Elon Musk criticize AI. And here's what Bitcoin has to do with it. Twitter user, a Twitter user published a post in which he expressed concerns about the impact of artificial intelligence on humanity and what the long-term consequences of its use may be in the future. Thus, he attracted the attention of two prominent figures on Twitter and beyond it, innovative tech entrepreneur Elon Musk and Bitcoin advocate Max Kaiser. These two shared their takes on whether AI presents a problem for mankind or not. Kaiser stated that Bitcoin should benefit from AI's extinction. That's quite a controversial view. Elon Musk offers a solution to AI issue. This tweet caught the eye of the CEO of Tesla, owner of Twitter, and founder of several other companies in the high-tech sphere, Elon Musk. He responded that he is of a similar opinion. The questions asked by Twitter user I am Harold Durr are the right questions to ask, he said. What is more, Musk admitted that he had been thinking about similar things for many years. What he can offer as a leading entrepreneur in the sphere of new technologies is his company Neuralink. 
According to Musk, he set it up to create a symbiosis between the human brain and AI, and the company was launched as a possible long-term solution to that issue. In my opinion, that will be an equally controversial new technology, but one that we will have to deal with. In 2015, Musk participated financially in the launch of OpenAI, the company that has recently created ChatGPT. Over the past few months, however, Musk has been criticizing this product as woke. The reason is that ChatGPT has been programmed to change the texts it produces in a way so as not to offend users on any basis. Earlier this year, Musk issued a tweet stating that his interests now include not only crypto, but also AI. He criticized woke AI and has been reportedly considering launching his own company that would be able to rival open AI. Wow. Max Kaiser, the prominent Bitcoin proponent from the old guard, who became interested in Bitcoin and began promoting it a few years after it was launched, also reacted to the aforementioned tweet. He believes that artificial intelligence is an extinction event for humanity. The solution to that issue to protect mankind, according to Kaiser, is to deprive AI of the energy it needs for functioning and transfer all that spare energy to Bitcoin miners so they can use it to keep Bitcoin hash power high. That's an intense opinion. Here's his tweet. AI is an extinction event for our species. Our only hope is if we starve it of the energy it needs to survive by diverting and dedicating an AI extinction event amount of energy to Bitcoin hashing. Phew. After that mind-blowing revelation, it might be hard to think of anything else, but we're going to move on to number 12. Shiba Inu. Some news for you. Shibarium burning 70% of base fee leaves community delighted. Well, of course, who wouldn't be delighted? They get to keep more money. The long-awaited documentation detailing an overview of the Shibarium Layer 2 protocol and its operations has now been made public, as reported by you today. According to the documents, Shibarium would be 10,000 times cheaper than Ethereum. Shibarium transfer fees are separated into base and priority fees. The base fee is a crucial component of transaction fees on a blockchain. When a user makes a transaction on the network, the base fee is locked in a contract on Shibarium, while the priority fee is paid to the validator. The part that excites the SHIB community is that this base fee will be split into 70% that will be burned, and 30% that will be set aside to maintain the network. 13. And hip hip hooray, we have another controversiality. Senator Ted Cruz introduces a bill to stop US digital dollar. Seems he wants the U.S. to stay behind the rest of the world in this area, but I'm sure he has valid reasons. Texas Senator Ted Cruz and other Senate Republicans have confirmed that they do not support the United States Federal Reserve in its pursuit of the implementation of a CBDC, a central bank digital currency. Cruz reiterated his stance by introducing a bill that restricts the Fed Reserve from embracing a direct consumer CBDC. Senators Mike Brown and Chuck Grassley are also co-sponsors of the bill. While speaking of the introduction of his bill, Cruz said, The federal government has no authority to unilaterally establish a central bank currency. The bill goes a long way in making sure a big government doesn't attempt to centralize or control cryptocurrency and instead allows it to thrive in the United States. We should be empowering entrepreneurs, enabling innovation and increasing individual freedom not stifling it. Number 14. Let's take a look at what has been happening with Circle. Circle abandons Swift and collaborates with the Zapo Bank. Circle, a crypto financial services firm, announced that it has abandoned the Swift payment platform in order to collaborate with Gibraltar-based Zapo Bank. According to the release, Circle will work with Zapo Bank to incorporate USDC stablecoin payment Rails as a Swift substitute. This partnership will see Zapo Bank become the first licensed bank globally to integrate USDC payment rails. Under this agreement, customers will be able to deposit and withdraw money using the stablecoin with no fees from Zapo Bank, thus avoiding expensive and time-consuming SWIFT payments. And last, but definitely not least, number 50. And this one is a pretty exciting one, especially for all Doge fans. 
Dogecoin unveils a massive update to ease development of the leading meme coin. A core developer of popular meme asset Dogecoin is unveiling widespread updates to the blockchain as a means of making development on the protocol easier. In a new announcement, Doge developer Michi Lumen tells their 32,000 Twitter followers that many changes are coming to the project, including support for QR codes, other languages, message signing, and Windows builds. Exciting stuff. Lib Dogecoin now supports generations of seed phrases to and from keys in many languages. For non-developers, this functionality is available in the included such executable as a utility and can be used to generate mnemonic phrases. The developer goes on to say that the blockchain will also now be able to support image generating QR codes as well as message signing. LibDogecoin now generates QR codes on the fly in text, JPEG, and PNG formats without any additional libraries needed. Also functional in the such utility, LibDogecoin now supports message transaction signing and verification. Exciting stuff and great news for fans of the meme coin. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our news updates for this week. I trust and hope that you're going away more informed, more excited, more concerned, and more ready to do your investing without gambling. If you haven't yet done so, we'd appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to Mainstream Cryptos if you want to receive more content like this. I'm here every week serving up the hottest crypto news to you on a plate. Plus, we have just tons of other amazing content to help you on your investment journey. Thank you once again for tuning in. Have a good week and stay, as always, hashtag Safu.